in this section let's discuss about d3 scales so before discussing what d3 scale is or how to use it in our code let's have a look at the horizontal bar chart and vertical bar chart we have created in the previous section so this was the code for horizontal bar chart and this is the output it looks perfect and this was the code for vertical bar chart and this was the output now if you remember let me take the horizontal bar chart and here we decide the width of each div element based on the data so initially we actually tried with d let me show you the output then see the width was too short that is why we decided to multiply the number by 10 that is the data by 10 so here what is the actual issue when we visualize data what we actually do is that we are mapping the data available with us to a visual domain so here the data does not make sense in relation to the pixels so here we are displaying the width using pixels so when we specified 31 px or 25 px 35 px 18 px 9 px or 14 px it does not actually make any sense with the total available area in pixels right this total available area is obviously more than 600 or 700 so these numbers or the data does not make sense in relation to pixels that is why we had to multiply by 10 here also we did the same we had to multiply by 10 then made it as a height so in both these cases we had to multiply the numbers by 10 now suppose let me comment this and copy this and suppose the input is numbers like this say 3100 then 250 35 then say 1800 say 90 and 140 now what will happen let's see let me save this and show you see the div elements are displayed like this for the first one it is sure that this is not the end because we could not even see the number which is written in the center so it has not even reached the center till here 250 is okay 35 is okay in case of 1800 itself it is not the end here because this is just the half of the div where we wrote the values and 90 and 140 are seen clearly now here we are actually displaying the numbers as such we haven't done any multiplication now suppose instead of div if i specify by 10 and see the change see now they are displayed like this now what is the issue this 35 90 and 40 actually does not fit in the div element which means these div elements are too small so here also this does not make any sense with the available pixels right in the previous case that is with 31 25 35 18 9 and 14 we could decide that if we multiply the numbers by 10 and display them it will be okay but in this case even with multiplication or just division we could not get some reasonable values so here we need to do some other kind of mathematical calculations so that the data will make sense in relation to the pixels so it is not practical for us to do which kind of mathematical calculation will work fine and here it is just a case of say six pieces of data but in real world it will be thousands and thousands of items we have to visualize and it will not be practical at all to map the input values in proportion to the available pixels or the output area so here comes d3 scales in action d3 scales actually do some kind of mapping so that the input will be mapped in such a way that it makes sense with the available pixels so that is the functionality of d3 scales so d3 scales also use some kind of mathematical calculations in such a way that data makes sense with the available pixels so in both these cases we had to do some kind of calculation here so that the data fit into the available pixels or the available area in an efficient and correct way so let me make it d into 10 itself i have done this just to show you what is a relevance of d3 scales 
So hope you understand why we need D3 scales. Here we might not feel it is that important because here we just had to multiply the numbers by 10. But if the range of values is too high, that is if the minimum is say 5 and the maximum is say 10,000, then we cannot decide what mathematical calculation can do it for us. So it will be done by D3 scales. And in D3 scales, we will be providing the input data and also the available output range. So in D3, these are referred to as domain and range. So input domain is actually the range of values or the available data which we need to map. And the output range will be the range of values where we want to display the data in terms of pixels. So in the next lecture, we will see how to use D3 scales in our applications in such a way that data makes sense with respect to the available pixels. We will see it in the next lecture.